Good evening. Again, this is our 6.30 Bible study for the young adults of our shell friends. Usually this is done in a little bit more intimate setting. Uh, but with COVID-19 and everything that... All the consequences of COVID-19, everybody's kind of staying home. So, we've been doing these remote Bible studies, and I hope, hopefully you've been able to gain some sort of chestnut, some sort of ray of hope during these dark times that get you through. Remember that we're all in this together. We're all here to pray for one another, to help one another, to talk to one another on the phone. Be kind to one another during these hard times. A few announcements. Rusty has his Bible study every Wednesday at 6.30. Same kind of deals we're doing here. He leaves live streaming it from his home. I encourage you to, to make those, to go to our Facebook page and look at the, the past ones he's done. They're good. Again, 6.30 on Thursdays, normally, we'll be, we would be having our young adult Bible study, but since we had some technical difficulties yesterday, uh, we're posting it on Friday. Before we start, let's just take a moment, being that it's Good Friday, and the weight of this day under normal circumstances, and the weight of this day under COVID-19 circumstances and exactly what what the cross means now what suffering means now to us as we watch a global pandemic kill thousands of people maybe this is a good Friday unlike others to where our, our sense of brokenness and our sense of disruption probably would probably be a, as a, would rival those of the disciples in Jesus' time. How their world was turned upside down and they were afraid for their very lives. So let's take a moment in quiet reflection and prayer. Lord, I thank you for the ability to live stream and the ability to be connected even though we're miles apart. I pray that you would bless us as we continue this journey to Easter. Now we would take a moment to reflect on your sacrifice, Lord. Reflect exactly what the cross means. What it's always meant. Amen. So last week we started a little study on peace. And we talked about Jesus in the calm in the storm with the twelve. We talked about that in Mark 4. Today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. And we're going to go start in 21 and go towards the, the rest of that chapter. We're talking about forgiveness. So if peace is the objective, the only way to have peace in our relationships with others, with our family, or with our, in our romantic relationships with our spouse, or our children, or our co-workers, or whoever we come into contact with, the only way to have peace with people is to be forgiving. Jesus takes forgiveness kind of, in, he takes it seriously. So starting in verse 21, Peter's when I ask Jesus how many times he has to forgive his brother. And then Peter approached to him and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times. Again, seven times being a perfect number. Peter's being poetic here, but Jesus is going to go one more over. I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus replied, but seventy times seven. Now Jesus again, he's not given a specific number. He's going back the the readers of the, the first the audience of this parable, the first audience, would have gone back in their mind and thought of Lamech. Lamech. 
Lamech. And uh, that's a lot easier to read than it is to say. In Genesis, when the Meg, the son of the great grandson of Cain, he said, "If Cain be revenged seven times, and Lamech be avenged seventy times seven." So Jesus here is flipping that. So not only are we not supposed to seek revenge uh, when somebody hurts us, but we're supposed to forgive them as many a times as they do hurt us, and often as they do. And that was that in, in a in a culture like first century Palestine, honor is a big thing, and so to forgive somebody that has insulted your honor or insulted the honor of your family, you wasn't seen as acceptable in those days. You were supposed to hold grudges. You were supposed to to be uh, to, to hold uh, vendettas against people that that harm you or harm your family. So Jesus is saying. Not only were you not supposed to do that, but you're supposed to do the opposite of that. Which is, no matter what anybody does to us, we need to forgive the dead. Now why? Jesus goes to explain, he says, For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle accounts, one who owed 10,000 pounds was brought before him. Since he did not have the money to pay it, his master commanded that his wife and his children and everything that he had be sold to, the, to pay the debt. At this, the servant fell face down before him and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you everything. And then the master of that servant had compassion, released him, and forgave him the loan. So what are we talking about? What's this, this deal with this business with the talents? Uh, six, ten thousand talents. That's a lot of money. So, what's the cultural context to this? Jesus was most likely thinking of somebody like Herod, who was the governor of Judea at the time. And he hired people to collect taxes for the province and for, for Rome. Matthew, the tax collector, was, would have been one of these for, uh, he wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked for Herod. He would have worked for Pilate. But the same, the same image is that a very powerful man hires several people to collect taxes in the region. And this man, who was supposed to settle his account, had owed ten thousand talents. Now, ten thousand talents—that is the largest sum of money that Jesus could, would have been aware of at the time. So he's being—he's exaggerating to make a point. Ten thousand talents. All the tax for uh, Judea and Galilee and the surrounding areas in, in Israel and Jerusalem yearly never amounted more than 600 talents. So 10,000 talents was just, it was the largest sum of money Jesus could think of. And so the idea is this fellow that owed all this, all this money could never pay it back. Not in a million years. It would, uh, worked out it was over 250,000 years worth of money or worth of wages. No way, you know, no way he could ever pay that that loan. So he has to be forgiven. That servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking, and said, "Why pay? No, pay what you owe. A hundred denarii, a lot less than ten thousand dollars." At this, his fellow servant fell down and began begging him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing, and instead he went and threw him into prison till he could pay what he owed. When the other servants saw what he what had taken place, they were deeply distressed and went and reported to their master everything that had happened. And then, after he had summoned him, his master said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all this debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have also had mercy on your fellow servant, as I had mercy on you? And because he went ang away angry, or because he was angry, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay everything back that was owed. So, also my heavenly Father will do to you unless every one of you forgives his brothers or sisters 
from their heart. So what's the point of this parable? The point of the parable is this. We owe a debt we can never repay. In Christ, 2,000 years ago-ish, right around this time, paid it for us. So in light of and that of that debt being forgiven, we should never hold grudges or be angry and withhold forgiveness from anybody because we've been forgiven so much. And that kind of takes even more of a contrast today as we sit here and it's Good Friday. And we think back this is the day that we celebrate that Jesus died for us. He was flogged and he was beaten and he was crucified and he died for me. Not for you. So in light of that, I think I could probably do better forgiving others. How about you? Until we meet again, friends, I hope that you stay healthy. And I hope that you stay safe. And I hope that you're kind to one another. Bye-bye.